Hey guys, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk about speeding up your dry time. I feel like it's the biggest question in the world to every groomer ever, especially new groomers. How do you speed up dry time? Uh, so this is going to be, I'm going to try to simplify this as much as I can. As I was writing out the notes to make this video, I quickly realized how in depth and how many different aspects actually go into speeding up your dry time. So I don't know, maybe it's something I'll teach a class on eventually. But for now, I'm going to try to simplify it as much as I can. And hopefully it'll make sense. And we're not going to be here for an hour. Let's hope. <laughs> I hope I didn't just jinx myself. But all right, let's get started. When you're thinking about drying, the most important thing is actually your bath. It actually starts before you even get to the drying. So what this comes down to is the products that you're using. Are you getting the dog really clean? Are you spending that extra time on that D-shed to make sure that coat is really, really clean? Another thing that I see a lot, and it's something that I know I've gotten some comments about, when I talk about products, I'll often say, like, I wouldn't use this on a Yorkie, or I wouldn't use this on this coat, or I wouldn't use this on this coat, and you guys will be like, why not? What if that, what if I want to use it on that? This is actually why. So the reason when you're working on like a Yorkie, for example, that you wouldn't want to use something heavy, like a moisturizing shampoo or anything like that, is it's going to weigh the coat down. It's going to make your dry time take longer because of the extra moisture on the coat. And it's also, over time, it's going to create a buildup on that hair. So even if you don't notice it, maybe the first time you use a moisturizing product on a Yorkie, if you use that every single time for like five or six months, for example, you will start to notice that their hair is limp, it doesn't want to stand up, and it can even look damaged at the ends, like split ends. Honestly though, where I see the problem beginning nine times out of ten is a lot of groomers don't believe in conditioner. This by the way, is not a superstition. <laughs> Conditioners are okay. You just need to make sure that you're using the right conditioner for the right coat. Now, I want to make a video where I like really, really break this down for like the breeds and like what I would recommend and all of that so that we can like really, really dive into it. But just rule of thumb for your like Nordic breeds, any anything that needs a D-shed, anything like that, you want to use more of a moisturizing conditioner. And then for like your Yorkies, Maltese, Shizus, anything like that, you want to go for more of like a volumizing conditioner. It's also really nice how a lot of the companies have their products laid out and it'll say like, you know, for drop coat or whatever. So you can just look at what the bottle says and use it on the appropriate coat if you're not sure. So for example, there was one day that I used the iGroom banana shampoo and I said I like to use it on all my D-sheds. I don't use it anymore by the way so don't go like ordering it thinking it's my favorite because it's not. Uh, but anyway I was using it on a D-shed dog and I would said something about like I would not use this on a doodle or a Yorkie or whatever and I remember a groomer reached out to me and they were like well why you know I love it on doodles and again maybe it's okay I'd have to see their coat, but I also know it's very moisturizing, whereas typically poodle type coats you don't really want super moisturized because to get that nice fluffy haircut you need that hair to stand up, and if it's over moisturized it's going to want to lay down. That's why on a Nordic breed where you do want that coat to lay down and nice and smooth after that D-shed, that's why you want something more moisturizing because it'll lay that coat down. So it's really important to make sure, first of all, before anything else, that you are using the right shampoo and conditioner and leave-ins on your dogs. You're not over-moisturizing and you're not under-moisturizing. So really quick to talk about, like, okay, this is the number one mistake I see groomers making. So you get that Yorkie in, and it's a grease ball, right? And you're like, oh, Dawn, right? Pull out the Dawn. <laughs> Anyway, so you jump and grab your bottle of Dawn, you shampoo the fuck out of that Yorkie, and then you get him on your table and you're combing him and he's greasy again. Why? Why is that happening? I'm going to tell you. So your skin and their skin produces oil when it's dry. That's why a lot of times when you get something like a Yorkie Cocker Spaniel 
cheesy, whatever that's greasy, they'll also have dry flakes because their skin is dry. So what the skin is doing is it's like, oh, the skin's dry, it needs more oil. So it's producing a lot of oil. So then you go in with your Dawn and you strip all of that oil that it's made. It's already made too much and you took all that away. Now the skin's like, oh my God, I made all of that oil and it's gone. Clearly, I didn't make enough oil, so I need to make more. So then it'll make even more oil. And that's why you see those Yorkies that like you'll give them a bath and before you're even done with the haircut, they're greasy again. It's because you didn't replace the oil that you stripped away from their hair. If you just take that one extra step to put some conditioner on them and condition that skin and get rid of that dryness, then the skin doesn't feel like it needs to produce that much oil to take care of the problem but if you're just taking away all the oil you're gonna freak the skin out and you are gonna be causing problems to their skin and coat and that's before you even get into like the matting that that kind of process would cause to their hair using just dawn so that's a whole nother video I really didn't want to go like too deep into that so <clears throat> We're going to leave it at that, but regardless, that is something that's so important is to make sure that you are using the correct products for what you are trying to do. The next most important thing is make sure the dogs are clean. Like, I have seen some groomers brag about, like, oh, my bachelor, like, you know, under five minutes or whatever. I don't think that's really brag worthy, personally. Like, I really, like want to spend the most time in the bath. The more time you spend in the bath, the less you're going to spend on the dry. If that dog is squeaky clean and well conditioned and that hair has been properly taken care of, your dry time is going to be like nothing. I'm telling you just using the right products and getting them really, really clean and well conditioned will completely change your dry time right off the bat. I never ever rush my baths. I will never forget one of my first grooming jobs. I was working with this mobile groomer and we had a house of like four or five dogs. And I was bathing one and she literally jumped in. I had like been bathing him for a second. And she jumped in with the second dog to like, <laughs> like threw him out onto the table and started drying him. I'm like, that dog is not clean. There's no way in the two minutes that you just spent cleaning that dog, cleaning that dog, that it is clean. So, and then it's just ridiculous because you spend so much time drying it because you didn't actually get it clean. Part of the reason your dogs don't want to dry is because you didn't get all the oil out. So, don't rush your baths. Um, if... I personally don't think grooming is something that needs to be rushed in general. Because rushing causes stress to the dogs and it causes stress to you. And it's obviously can also be dangerous when you're working with sharp tools. So, but even if it's just a bath dog, just like your anxiety being like, oh, I gotta get this done, like the dog's gonna pick up on that. Like, I really think grooming is not something that's meant to be rushed. And I do, by the way, understand that some shops are not set up in a way that they have the extra time, but. If you want to speed up your dry time, I would consider to at least make sure the dog is like super, super clean. But once your dog is all clean and well conditioned and you have done a really, really good bath, now the next most important thing is to towel dry the dog. So the, you've got options here. The, you can use the absorber towel. So for me, the absorber towel, um, I, I have like actually, I have OCD and like certain textures like get me and that one like it's squishy oh I hate it. I hate it like I there's a video of me trying out the absorber towel like a long time ago and like when you squished it out in the bathtub like you could just see it all over my face I was so disgusted and like I just could never get past the texture of it but that being said it really does absorb a lot of water but it's so squishy and slimy. I hate it. I freaking hate that towel. No, no offense. And they, they sent it to me for free. They were so nice. And I just, I hated it. I'm sorry. But I will still say, like, some people absolutely love it. I listen to the Groom Pod all the time. And I know that's one of their sponsors. Um, but I couldn't get over this. 
It just, like, it's so squishy. It's just, uh, it feels like some weird skin or something. I don't know. It's fucked up. I don't like it. So personally, I don't use the absorber towel, but I do, like, I have a bunch of towels in the van. I don't groom. Like, I'm not a power groomer. I groom, like, four to six dogs a day, so I don't need a ton of towels, even having full-size towels. So that's not an issue for me. But regardless, the main point of me bringing this up, I, like, got so on the absorber towel, like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so, the, getting them super well towel dried before you start blow drying is also going to make a big difference, because, one, it's going to get them dry faster, like, their actual, like, skin and coat is going to be, like, dry faster, so that means less dry time for them, because I personally, like, there's, like, a handful of dogs I've met that, like, are okay with the dryer or kind of enjoy it for certain spots, but, like, to be honest, none of them want to stand there all day and get dried either, you know what I mean? So, towel dry them a lot, because getting the extra moisture off is just going to make it faster for them, um, because, one, when you run over it, it's going to be faster, and two, when if you don't towel dry them well most of us have stainless steel tubs some of us have like the regular bathtubs but regardless of what material it's made out of uh it is going to like the water is just going to be like on it and so like let's say like you're doing like a soaking wet pit bull for example and you blow that water off and it goes all over your stainless steel tub and like maybe that spot was dry for a second but then they lean on the wall <laughs> and get themselves wet again so i like to <clears throat> towel dry them really well and then I like to put the towels around them like on the the floor of the tub and whatever and if I end up moving them to my table if their feet are still wet enough that I think it's going to get my paw mat wet then I'll put a towel down on the table too so um towel drying is super super important and that's one thing I know I've talked to groomers about when I'm talking about dry time that I know they're not doing they just like you know if anything like I've like, some groomers, like, barely towel dry at all. And I'm telling you, it'll make such a major difference if you just sit there and really go over with them with the towel. You can even take, like, legs and ears and tails and stuff and kind of, like, wring them out with your hands before you go in with the towel if you want. Um, but just towel drying them really good is going to make such a big difference. Like, I literally cannot explain it. So if you can get into the absorber towels, those are really good for that. But, like, if you're a texture person like I am, like, you... I don't even know what happened to mine. I, I think I found them when I was, like, cleaning out a back room <laughs> that I have over there. And I, I'm hoping I threw it away. I don't know. I think it's always kind of grossed me out a little bit. I just can't get past the texture. Anyway, so moving on. Um, the next most important thing that I have for drying is the Happy Hoodie. So I absolutely love the Happy Hoodies. And I think you can buy them at like a bunch of different places. Like I think you can get them on Amazon. I know Love Groomers has had them, but... Go watch my video about the Groomers Essentials before you order from Love Groomers. Like, it's like, <laughs> at your own risk, you order from Love Groomers. <laughs> so, uh, either way, wherever you can find the Happy Hoodies, they're really nice. Um, they absorb the extra moisture from, like, the head and the ears, which makes it a lot faster to dry their head whenever you take it off. So, what I typically do is I dry their entire body first, and then I take the Happy Hoodie off at the end once they're, like, basically done, and usually their head will dry, like, almost instantly. Like, it's really, really quick. So, it absorbs the extra moisture, but it also helps to drown out a little bit of the dryer noise. So, especially for, like, overly scared dogs, I don't, I have every dog but my scared one with me. My big German Shepherd, big tough boy, Max, he will literally, like, run for the hills if the dryer comes on. So he, like, has to wear a happy hoodie. That's the only way I can get him to not, like, like, he would rather die. And I mean that literally. Like, he's like, I will jump out of the tub and hang myself before I will be dried. Like, that's, he's insane. So anyway, I have to do happy hoodies on him, so... Um, they are so, so nice for that. Um, they really help to chill the dogs out. Like, some dogs, like, the dryer is just, like, way too much for them. So, highly, highly recommend them. I've had, I have probably under 10 dogs that just won't let me put the happy hoodie on. Typically, what they do is just, like, pull it right off. Um, but sometimes I will get one that, like, you put it on and they're, like, ah, like, start, like, flailing and I just take it off so they don't, like, smack their head against something. You know what I mean? So, anyway, but that's rare. It's very rare. <laughs> like, I would say, I don't know, like I said, out of, like, all of my clients, I probably have maybe even under five that won't tolerate the happy hoodie, but everybody else I use it on. I have a ton of them in my van. 
once you've gotten them towel dried and the happy hoodies on and you're ready to like start on the dryer the next thing you need to be aware of is your environment around you look around for a second are all of your mirrors and windows fogged up is it like super humid in there uh, honestly like here i can feel it in the air when it's humid like it feels moist my hair will sometimes tell me too that it's it's very yeah so the what you want to do is you want to make sure that your air conditioning is running um especially i don't know okay, this is the thing curtis explained this to me in the handy van but i don't know if it's like this in with every single air conditioning unit huh i actually don't know well okay so <laughs> let me tell you how the handy one works so what it does is the handy air conditioning actually pulls moisture out of the van and it will like it actually will like put it outside like there's like a little tube <laughs> I'm so good at explain these things um there's like a little tube that like goes out from behind the air conditioning and it, sometimes it will leave like a little puddle in your and like sometimes a big puddle in your client's driveway um just depends like during the summer I usually will notice more of a puddle left behind than in the winter um but yeah, it takes out the extra moisture in the air. Um, and what I'll, I'll do is like I'll turn it up, even if it makes me a little bit cold. The nice thing about the handy dryer is there's like four vents, and you can close the two that are like blasting directly on you and have the other ones opening, and it'll just help to cycle out some of that moisture. Because um, if it's super moist in the air, it's just the dog's not gonna get dry. It's just it's like if you were trying to blow dry your hair while somebody was in the shower. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not going to work. So make sure that it's not super humid. And I will, I, I am in South Carolina, so it doesn't get, like, overly cold here. But I leave my AC on year-round. It's just during the winter, I turn it on low and, like, down to, like, a lower setting. It's always kind of going, so it's always, like, pulling the humidity out. Because even during the winter, it gets, like, humid here. Okay, so once you've done all that, you've you've towel dried the dog, he's got his happy hoodie on, you've got your AC going, you're ready to pick up your dryer and go. So now the things that you need to think about are what angles are you holding your dryer at? It's not all about just like having the most powerful dryer in the world and just like blasting them from across the room. Like sometimes it's about like how close are you to the coat. A short to medium length coat you can usually get a little bit closer to the coat when you're drying than you can on a longer coat. And on a longer coat especially you don't want like the super powerful dryer to blow the hair and tangle it around itself. You need something that is... A little bit slower that's just going to slowly stretch that hair out for you so like I said the angles are really important um, come here volunteer thank you <laughs> isn't it so handy this is why you have to have a bunch of dogs so um, when I'm blow drying a dog like Stevie I'm gonna angle so my dryer would be down kind of going almost parallel to her coat I would be kind of like going down <laughs> it's really hard to do <laughs> I should plan ahead. Um, but <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're kind of blowing down. You don't want to, I mean, I guess you could, I wouldn't blow, blow directly at, because also when you blow directly at, you've got to think the air is going to bounce off and go up towards her head. And I don't, when I'm drying a dog, I typically don't want it to blow up towards their end, their head, unless I'm doing something very specific. So generally I'm going to try to blow it down away from their head because they're going to react less to that. So it's not so much like chasing them around the tub, the tub with the dryer. Another important thing, I think I'm done with you. Thank you. Say hi and bye to Stevie. So another thing to think about is you want to slow down. Like, I see a lot of groomers doing the, like, you know, like, the really fast thing. And, like, first of all, it's really not good for your, like, your wrists and arms and all that. Any repetitive moments, that's how uh, you get carpal tunnel and tendonitis and all those things. So you want to be aware for the sake of that. That's Luna. I was going to say, is that Max? Let me here. <laughs> like I said, just slow down because um, like I said, the, that fast motion is not good on your wrist and it really is not getting your dog dry any faster and it's also like a lot more stressful for the dog because they can't really predict where the dryer is going to be next. When you move slow and steady, it's going to dry in like a perfect kind of straight line. You're going to... it. 
it makes it a lot easier for me anyway to make sure that everything's actually dry whereas if you're doing like quick all over the body you're more likely to accidentally leave a wet spot so I like to pick my starting point you know whether it be like on their back like by their shoulder blades or by a back foot or whatever depending on the dog and I move slow and steady all across the body especially on any of my haircut dogs um, poodles and doodles anything curly coated it's even more important to really take that time and just slowly go over them because if you're just kind of whipping all over the place that hair is going to end up being a lot curlier it's kind of picture it like you're doing a blowout on a human like do you go to the salon and they just like blast all over your head they may do it for a second to kind of get it started but then they go in and like fine detail so Sometimes it does depend on the dog. Sometimes if I get like a big dog, for example, that I know it's going to be hard on my back to try to dry the whole dog in the tub, sometimes I will run over them a little bit quicker, but I do try to avoid any movements that's going to cause the dog to be like, ah, you know what I mean? But the most important thing is to think about what you are actually doing to the coat. Like I said, when you have a long coat that you're using a really harsh dryer and it's blowing all over the place and tangling together, you have to think about like what the that's doing to the integrity of the quote. The, the quote. The coat. <laughs> Technically, I could go outside and take a leaf blower to my hair and probably have it dry in two seconds, but it would probably like be one all big tangle together and it would look terrible. So it's not all about just having like an insanely strong dryer. That's one thing I see people talk about a lot, especially with the Hanvey Vans. I would say the, the only thing, my biggest thing, main thing I've seen people complain about with the Hanvey Vans is they don't think the dryers are strong enough. And yes, I will say the canine dryer, dryers are stronger when you're using them, but you don't necessarily need them to be if that makes sense. If you just use your handy dryer with these methods, then it'll dry super fast. I have my friend that has a canine dryer and we were talking about dry times one day and my dry times are about the same as hers with the canine dryer because I have my methods with my handy dryer. So as long as you take the time, like I said, focus on the bath, make sure you're not using moisturizing products on a dog that doesn't need moisture and vice versa. Towel dry them really well. Make sure your environment around you isn't super moist. You can make almost any dryer work for you. So I tried to not make this specific to just the dryer I, I use because right now I do have the handy dryer, but I've had the Power, is it Power X or the blue dryer? I think I got it from Groomer's Choice. Um, X Power, maybe it's X Power. I've had that, I've had Flying Pig or Schoenbau, Schoenbau. What's that other one called? I'm not good at these names, but it's like pink and silver. I've had one of those. I've used canine dryers. I've used, and now I can't remember which one we had at camp. It was like some, I remember it was white and black and it hung on the wall and it was big and powerful. I've used all different types and even that big powerful one at camp that like literally if you weren't holding on like it would be dangerous if you let go of that thing. It just it blows out really, really strong and fast. All it does, in my opinion, is freak the dog out more. So personally, I find the dryers in my van to be completely fine. And the reason I even bring that up is I've seen a, a lot of groomers mess up their batteries in their van. Um using dryers that are too strong and if they don't mess up their batteries I've seen people pull outlets out of the wall because a lot of these like stronger dryers the way they connect the wall is like I don't know strong I don't know what how do you describe that uh but regardless I've seen people pull their outlets out of the wall by like connecting and disconnecting the dryers and when I see that it just gets me because I'm like it's so unnecessary like if you just take the proper steps then you can dry any dog fast with you know a decent dryer it doesn't have to be the strongest dryer on the market so anyway I hope some of these techniques help you to speed up your dry time this is what I do on every single dog um, each dog like I said they kind of get their own combination of products and happy hoodie and whatever but that's the main thing is I make sure I check the products towel dry them well check my moisture levels and dry slowly.
those things make my life easier. So I hope they make your life easier too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm so glad it didn't go on as long as I was worried about it going on. <laughs> so anyway, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.